Today we will talk about osteoporosis prevention, screening, and diagnosis. Osteoporosis is a common generalized skeletal disorder that's characterized by low bone mineral density and loss of bone mass, microarchitectural deterioration, and then a decline in bone quality. All of this increases the vulnerability of the bone to fractures. It's a silent disease until a fracture occurs. In the United States, one in two women older than 50 years old will experience an osteoporotic fracture, but only 24% of women aged 60 and older receive osteoporosis treatment during the first year after a fracture. So it's something that we need to incorporate into our clinical screening and management of all of our patients. There are many health inequities that have been identified at each step in osteoporosis care, including the screening, DEXA testing after fracture, which we'll talk about later, treatment initiation, and outcomes after the fracture. Notably, black women are less likely to be screened for osteoporosis compared to women in other racial and ethnic groups, undergo DEXA testing after hip fractures, and receive fewer prescriptions for osteoporosis treatment after diagnosis. Bone mass is usually stable in healthy premenopausal individuals. As estrogen levels decline around menopause, bone resorption by osteoclasts increases and then exceeds the ability to form new bone by osteoblasts. This leads to bone loss and loss of microarchitecture of both trabecular and cortical bone, which then increases the risk of fracture. Bone mass may begin to decrease before menopause with an accelerated phase of bone loss during the menopausal transition. There are multiple risk factors for osteoporosis that I want to review. First, low bone mineral density and history of fragility fractures are significant predictors of future fractures. Other risk factors include increasing age, parental history of hip or spine fracture, a BMI less than 20 or a body weight less than 127 pounds, smoking, excessive alcohol use, meaning more than three drinks per day, and conditions, diseases, and medications that are associated with secondary osteoporosis. This would include HIV, anorexia, diabetes, gastric bypass, premature menopause, renal impairment, rheumatoid arthritis, vitamin D deficiency, and then other medications to think about, um, such as antiepileptic drugs, antiretrovirals, aromatase inhibitors, chemotherapy, glucocorticoids, and heparin. The preferred test for identifying bone loss, assessing risk of fracture, and measuring bone mineral density is the DEXA scan. DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. It is, um, when using the DEXA scan, the most accurate and precise measurements of BMD are the bones in the hip and lumbar spine. The results from a DEXA scan are reported as a T-score or a Z-score. T-score is used in diagnosing osteoporosis in the postmenopausal population. It's calculated by comparing an individual's BMD measurement at the hip or spine with the peak mean bone mineral density in a healthy young adult reference population and is expressed as the number of standard deviations from the mean bone mineral density. The Z-score is expressed as the number of standard deviations between an individual's bone mineral density and the mean bone mineral density of a reference population of the same sex, age, and ethnicity. It's useful for identifying premenopausal individuals who may be at risk for secondary osteoporosis. So for premenopausal individuals, a Z-score of minus 2.0 or lower is considered below the expected range for age. On this slide, you'll see a table by the World Health Organization that has the criteria for diagnosing osteoporosis. So a T-score in a DEXA scan of minus 1.0 or greater means that there's a normal bone mineral density. A score between minus 1.0 and minus 2.5 is low bone mass, which is consistent with osteopenia. And my minus 2.5 or less is consistent with osteoporosis, but we will talk about later how there 
are other ways of diagnosing osteoporosis and other um, factors that can go into making that diagnosis. So if somebody comes into your office and you're thinking about screening or evaluating somebody for osteoporosis, the first thing to do is gather a thorough medical history. And here you want to assess for risk factors and conditions, diseases and medications that could be associated with secondary osteoporosis. Um, after that, in the physical exam, it's very important to also include measurements of changes in height. Um, height loss can be an indicator of an asymptomatic vertebral fracture. So the National Osteoporosis Foundation recommends that patients who have lost 1.5 inches or more from their peak height at age 20 or 0.8 inches or more from a previously documented measurement should undergo vertebral imaging. Um, and vertebral compression fractures can be diagnosed on x-ray or by vertebral fracture assessment at the time of the DEXA if that's available. Height loss can also indicate an increased risk of non-vertebral fractures. So um, in a cohort study, they found that height loss of greater than two inches was associated with a significantly increased risk of hip fracture and non-spine fracture, even after adjustment for bone mineral density and vertebral fracture incidence. So to diagnose postmenopausal osteoporosis, you need any one of the following. As we talked about earlier, a T-score of minus 2.5 or lower by DEXA of the femoral neck, total hip, lumbar spine, or distal third of the radius um, can make a diagnosis of osteoporosis, or a history of a fragility fracture, including asymptomatic vertebral fracture, and a frag fragility fracture is a pathological fracture that's caused by everyday activities. So a fracture from bending over or sneezing or minor trauma, such as falling from standing height. And the common locations for the fragility fractures include for the vertebral fractures um, or lung bone, so humerus, for example. Another way of diagnosing osteoporosis is if there's a T-score between minus 1.0 and minus 2.5, which would be classified as osteopenia, and the patient is at increased risk of fracture as determined by a formal clinical risk assessment tool, which we'll talk about on the next slide. There are multiple different risk assessment tools that are used. One of the most widely used ones is the FRAX, or the Fracture Risk Assessment Tool, and this is a computer-based algorithm that can be applied with or without a femoral neck BMD score and it's estimating the 10-year risk of hip fracture and the 10-year probability of a major osteoporotic fracture, which would be one in the spine, forearm, hip, or shoulder. And it's used in adults 40 years or older. Um, this score is helpful in postmenopausal patients younger than 65 with potential risk factors or in patients that are osteopenic um, and you're considering starting treatment or not. Um, the risk calculations are based on multiple different risk factors, so somebody's sex, age, height, weight, a previous fracture, parental history of hip fracture, use of steroids, smoking, alcohol intake, and other factors. It is, there's, there's actually separate calculators for different races and, ethno, and ethnic groups, and there are some limitations of the FRACs. Um, 